Hey there, we're camping in an actual campground today. I know, hard to believe. But the reason for that is, I got a pretty obvious shelter that would really stick out if I was camped somewhere trying to do it stealthy. But we are all set up here. If I can remember how to put this up, it's been a while. Pretty much just like that. Sure beats setting up a tent with poles. It's uh, a really neat design. It opens up uh, in seconds to turn into a shelter. And I'm throwing in uh, a cot, sleeping pad, all that good stuff. Because I'm curious to see if it keeps the mosquitoes out. And I kind of doubt that. In fact, uh, oh yeah, there's, it's full of mosquitoes already. So as you can see, this would not be the appropriate thing to use if you're in a situation like uh, stealth camping because it really sticks out. Anyhow, I set up camp and we'll take a look and do the tour inside. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, inside this thing, it's made out of coroplast, which is plastic cardboard, basically, corrugated plastic. And I can fit the cot in here quite nicely. I've got my sleeping bag. It's held together with uh, Gorilla Tape at joints. And it's actually just stitched together with uh, some pieces of Gorilla Tape on the outside. There is another video that shows, um, that shows this in use. And I use a piece of paper uh, to show how it was built. And we really didn't have any idea how to build this when we started building it. We figured we could probably make this out of Coroplast. It sets up super quick, so that's, that's great. And it's got a strange look to it. It almost looks like it, it messes with your depth of field because it's triangular instead of square. Anyhow, that's uh, what we got here. We're going to camp in here tonight. It's got some good insulation because it's... Uh, it might be too much insulation once the sun hits this in the morning and it starts to really heat up. But uh, yeah, and we're gonna get a fire going because it's uh, mosquitoes are crazy out here and it's fire time. As every true outdoorsman knows, a bunch of garbage on some wood and a lighter is your prime vehicle for lighting fire. So you take your junk flyers, whatever it is, pull out your Bic lighter, and it'll burn. No worries about that. Didn't even need the blowtorch today. With the fire successfully roaring, it is time for a delicious, nutritious step two. And uh, I normally don't drink fancy things that need a bottle opener, but cheers. It's not as relaxing as going in to the middle of nowhere. That is far more relaxing for sure. And one day I will get back out there very soon. Uh, however, this tent I couldn't do anywhere else. I had to do it here just to see how it holds up in the summer and there might be rain tonight. It's time to cook. A 
Asparagus. Okay, I am going to cook up some uh, sausages and we'll pair that with the asparagus and a little bit of pasta or pasta or however you pronounce that in your particular country. But mild Italian sausage is what they had. There is uh, family campground happening here which some people may or may not appreciate little egg noodles. Boil it up on here. I had really great ambitions of doing an oil and garlic pasta for this, but we're gonna use uh, kind of an Alfredo sauce here, which is Pretty awesome to use when you're camping. Don't do that in bear territory, I'll tell you that. We're thankfully not in bear territory. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing anything even close to what I'm, uh, what I'm doing right now. Sausage. Mm -hmm. This is really good looking meal. Ah. <laughs> you can never go wrong with asparagus. Particularly, if you pepper it up. I got my pasta ready to go and I've dumped in a little hot sauce into it to make it even more delicious mm-hmm Guys, it doesn't get any better than this. Holy moly. Do my do my hunkering down thing. I thank you all for watching and actually a huge shout out to everybody that's donated to the beer donation funds and bought merch etc uh, you guys are all stand-up people you know some people have shocked me with the donations but, 
it is time for for me to slither into this caterpillar caterpillar looking uh, sleeping bag and uh, you get a good hunkering down happening tonight okay this shelter was very uncomfortable. There are mosquitoes everywhere. There's like no ventilation. It's covered in condensation. I gotta get out of here. That was a rough one for sure. Ah, great outdoors. This thermosol is a lifesaver. It's really keeping the bugs at bay. I can actually see them. They wanna come over and bite me so badly, but they, they just don't get anywhere close to this table. So that's great. And it is strange to be in a campground, I'll admit that. Uh, within about three minutes of pulling into the campground this a viewer walked up and says are you Steve and I said yeah he says what are you doing in a campground and what are you doing in an actual campground and uh, I explained I'm just testing out the the non stealthy uh, non stealthy structure here shelter for the evening but uh, yeah this turned into like a two-nighter the first night I went through and I, I was filming a whole bunch of stuff and this crow uh, ate my fish. I was gonna cook some haddock <laughs> and it just uh, it, it pecked away at it. It was all gone in no time. I just turned my back for a split second. So they're pretty used to uh, people's food sources around here. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna throw some bacon and eggs on the go. And um, yeah, it does add up. Like most people camp probably 30, 40 times a year, uh, 30, 40 nights a year. I don't know. I camp more than most people and it would it would add up staying a campground because there's reservation fees there is the camp fees uh, there's transportation the fuel to get out to the campground and of course all the all the other stuff you bring your uh, butane your bug spray your thermo thermocells so it, it could get pricey right if you're if you're doing that for 30 or 40 nights a year and it's uh, I don't think you really have to be doing it like so expensively because there's a lot of people ask, what do you really need? Like, they've never gone camping before. They're like, what What do I need to go camping? And you actually need surprisingly little. Surprisingly little. When we first started camping as teenagers, we would bring, you know, maybe some food, <laughs> some beer, and we'd crash in the vehicle half the time, right? It's, we've slowly, uh, I've slowly got more gear and more equipment and. But even even the stuff I have is nothing super fancy, you know. You can you don't need a fancy folding camp chair. You could take your kitchen chair for all that matters. Just park right by the fire. So I get bacon going and uh, uh, ramble on about camping a little bit more. Yeah, this will get the crows swooping down right away. It smells fantastic. One of the things out here is. Uh, I'm not sure where it is, where everybody else lives, but there seems to be like a really big trend of going to these mega campgrounds, you know, like thousand site campgrounds. And I'm sure there's economy of scale involved and profit considerations, etc. But there used to be a lot more small campgrounds, so they're closing down a ton of them. And often they were free, little local unique campgrounds. And it was, uh, it was really a great time to find these little campgrounds and they would take up the slack because you know this campground on every long weekend is completely sold out but then for the rest of the year it sits empty like at 10 20 percent capacity probably and it's i think i think the smaller campgrounds would make a lot more sense just to distribute to people around a little more a little more evenly but that's where I stand on that issue. Nice. I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like large eggs have gotten smaller over the years. Like, does that look like a large egg? I don't know. I had to use three instead of just the two I was going to do. Because they're so small. Awesome. So I do, I do use paper plates for convenience when I'm just doing a regular camping thing. And this uh, fork is a disposable one, but it's made out of cornstarch or something, so it's actually 
biodegradable so it'll it won't just uh, sit in a garbage dump forever but yeah mm. it is nice and relaxing to not <laughs> be <laughs> looking around for people to catch me like it is so sweet in a campground there's there's pluses and minuses that's for sure but uh yeah, this, this structure I've got, that's definitely going to have to be a, a winter camping thing because the mosquitoes just go right through it. And, you know, if you've been camping before, and probably if you're watching the channel, you have, or you might have, if you're in the tent when the sun comes up in the morning, and out here the sun comes up at like 6 or 5.30 or something, it is up real early. And the sun starts hitting that tent, and it gets so hot, so you have some water in there i like to plan a little bit before i set up to make sure that it's going to have shade in the morning when the sun comes up because i like my sleeping in i really have to say and that's my morsel of wisdom on um, tent positioning <laughs> Be using this shelter again anytime soon. Just like that? Easy peasy. So that's uh, camping in a regular campground. Um, I haven't done that in an awful long time. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, checking out that shelter. I do have that other video that explains exactly how it goes together and I do a little paper thing so I'll put a link to that if you're curious. And we kind of just hacked it together with Gorilla Tape. We didn't even know what we were doing, and it, it, it works. <laughs> it needs some tweaks, but uh, it works. So we'll see you guys uh, next week, uh, another week of this crazy thing called life, and uh, subscribe if you like, and cheers, guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs>